What's up guys, it's Patricia from tarantulaheaven.com and this week's Tarantula Tuesday is going to focus on a topic that is gonna be coming up more often as we get colder months. Um, so if you're like me and you're in the US on the East Coast, you know that it is getting colder. And if you're a tarantula owner, you struggle with how are you gonna keep your tarantulas warm this winter without spending tons of money or making a dangerous mistake? And this is a question I get asked a lot and I myself made many mistakes trying to figure this out. So I wanted to share what I've learned and what has worked for me in this video. Now, as you know, tarantulas cannot regulate their body temperature um, like pets like cats, dogs, or any other warm-blooded creatures. Um, so they need us to make sure that they are at the right temperature so that they can have, um, so that they can keep thriving. So before I get into it, I do wanna mention that different tarantulas have different needs. Like for example, my Spidey is a Chilean rose hair and she is comfortable around room temperature. Um, so basically if I'm cold, she's gonna be a little bit cold. So she might not ha need, have the requirements or needs that your tarantula has. For example, if you have a more exotic species, they might need a different temperature or humidity than she does. Um, she's pretty low maintenance, um, but a lot of tarantulas can actually be good at a comfortable room temperature. So you can kind of use your own comfort as a gauge for whether you should be um, increasing the heat in your home. So when I first got Spidey, my first winter with her was a really expensive one. I had done some research on how I should keep her warm, um, and I knew the dangers of things like heat lamps or heating mats, and I knew I didn't want to go that route because they're just so dangerous, and I'll get into that later. Um, but so what I did to solve the problem was to like basically blast my heat, and it was such an expensive choice. Um, I wasted like hundreds of dollars, well not wasted, but I spent hundreds of dollars that winter that I didn't need to spend. Um, so it led me to the following winter come up with a much better solution for me and Spidey and it's worked out really well. It's very affordable and it's very simple. So I definitely want to share that with you because I don't want anyone to um, go through the financial hardship that I did that winter <laughs> just trying to keep uh, Spidey happy and healthy. So anyway, we'll get into it. So how I ended up solving this issue that I had with Spidey in the winter was um, what I ended up doing is getting a really good space heater, one that was super safe, one that turned off when it reached a certain temperature, one that would turn off when it got knocked over, like things like those safety features are really important to have, especially if you have kids or other pets in the house that might be running around or could knock it over, or if you have to leave the house for periods of time to go to work or do anything else. So you you definitely want to get um, a space heater that um, has those kind of safety features built in or has like a timer or something like that to avoid any kind of emergencies or bad things happening um, and I'm gonna leave a link down below to um, the one I got which is like super quiet super energy efficient um, does not add too much to my electrical bill um, but I'll link to that below but so that's the method that I ended up doing and what I would do is basically um, I've play, kind of played around with what works so for the first year that I tried this method, I would put Spidey in my bedroom for the winter um, because it was the only place in my apartment besides the bathroom that had a door so I could trap the heat. And I would put the space heater and her tank in my room and I would close the door. So it stayed pretty toasty, but the rest of my house was still pretty cold. And I didn't want to turn the heat on again because um, I don't know if it was because the way my apartment is insulated or not, but turning the heat on is just like way too expensive. It's just outrageously like hundreds of dollars and it's not a big apartment. So I figured out that space heaters were the way to go. So um, then, so I did that for that year. And then the year after that, and what I've been doing every single year since then is putting Spidey actually in my main living area and just putting a space heater near her, like maybe like one or two feet away from her tank. So it's not right next to her and just having the air like kind of um, circulate through the apartment so that I benefit and so does she. And of course this would all depend on how big your um, the space you are in or if you have a door that you can close to trap the heat or not. Um, my living area is probably like 400 square feet and it does not have a door. Um, and one space heater works pretty well. Um, you might need like two for uh, if you have a larger room and it doesn't have a door that you can trap the heat in. But um, 
it's worked out pretty well for me. It's been extremely affordable um, and my electrical bill is not crazy and I don't have to turn on my heat all winter. So it's worked out really well for me. It's worked out for Spidey and I'm really happy that I found this method and I hope that it can help you too. So a lot of people wonder what is wrong with heat maps or heat lamps. And um, I mean, if you just go through an arachnoboard thread, you will have tons of people either sharing really bad experiences or um, people who will definitely turn you away from this idea. And that's because there's just such a high risk that your tarantula could get burnt or hurt. Um, I mean, first of all, um, the majority of tarantulas do not need any overhead lighting. That's pretty rare. And um, also, like, there's such a big risk about um, not being able to necessarily regulate the temperature of these things or, you know, putting them on once in the tank, they could get burned. So you just don't want to, um, or they could even, like, dry out or their water could evaporate too quickly. So you just don't want to um, take the risk with these kind of things because the temperature is very hard to regulate and um, there have been a lot of reports about this going very very wrong so I would definitely stress not doing this um, they don't really need that much heat that you would need like a heat direct heat lamp or a heat mat so um, definitely don't do that um, I think things like a space heater are much more reasonable and uh, much safer for them as well. And um, there's another tarantula expert who's really well known. I believe it's John 3800 on YouTube. He actually had a video about this too where, and I'll leave a link to that below, where he talks about his own space heater and what he does with his like whole room of tarantulas because he has like way more. <laughs> he has like a lot. Um, but basically he says, use a small room heater. Heat maps are not needed nor should they be recommended. They do more harm than good. And that's my attitude on it as well. Um, you just really do not want to take this risk. It's too dangerous. Um, and things like uh, the space heater are safer and very affordable. So why wouldn't you do something that's safer for your tarantula? And it's also really good if you have a lot of tarantulas. Um, like instead of having to buy so many dangerous heat mats or something like that, you can just buy one space heater and it will circulate the air and um, you do not have those safety risks to worry about. And um, one thing I do wanna mention though, if you are gonna use a space heater or like another heating method besides turning up your heat, is that you do want to provide more water or just monitor the water more in the winter because um, if you have the heat on in your house or if you have a space heater around or something like that, um, their water can evaporate quicker um, and it could get make the air a little bit drier. So you want to make sure that you're monitoring their water carefully. So I hope that was helpful to you guys. This is just what's worked for me. Something else might be working for you and if it does and it's safe then you should definitely stick to that. But this method has made um, my winter is much more affordable and less stressful and made me feel confident that I'm still giving Spidey great care and um, that I don't have to worry about what my heating bill is going to cost me every month. So that's always a good thing. Um, anyway, I'm going to link to a blog post below detailing more about what heater I use um, as well. And I have like a picture about my setup and how easy it is and how you can kind of do that um, just to give you more information. If you have any other tips about what you do during the winter to keep your tarantulas warm and healthy, um, please let me know in the comments because um, I think we all kind of figure out what works for us and um, this definitely is not the only way um, or the best way it's just you know something that i think is safe and has worked really well for me and other tarantula owners have said the same um, so anyway hope you enjoyed and if you are interested in more content like this and learning more about tarantula care you can sign up for my tarantula tuesday newsletter at the link below you can also um, grab my tarantula guide which i'll also leave a link to and thank you so much for watching and I will talk to you soon. Bye.